Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Kate Caridio, and I am with Princess Cruises, and I am here to talk to you about Princess Cruises and Alaska with AAA Northway. Alaska is one of my absolute favorite destinations, and we're going to dive in, but let me just remind you of who Princess Cruises is. We are the love boat. If any of you remember, there was a television show back in the late 70s, 80s uh, called The Love Boat with all of these wonderful cast of characters. And the television series was actually filmed on board Princess Cruises. So that is our claim to fame. Most of these folks still work with us representing our brand. You'll see that in our television commercials. Um, we actually have a cruise that they're all sailing on. But just wanted to point that out for those folks that might remember. Now, as I said, Princess Cruises and AAA Travel have an extremely wonderful partnership together um, in selling travel. AAA Travel is actually the leading agency within Princess Cruises in selling our Alaska product. And that is our Alaska Cruise and our Alaska Cruise Tours. So we are so appreciative of them. And we absolutely I love AAA Northway, our local folks here in New York. Um, and any of these travel advisors are so knowledgeable, um, which makes all the difference in the world when you're looking for information. Because you, you, me, um, you're listening to a recording, but there you can give them a holler live and they can answer any question for you. Now, before we dive into Alaska, I'm just going to point out because we have this special sailings out of New York in June. They are called American Heritage and they're 10 and 11 night sailings starting at about $600 a person. And they're kind of neat because you can board in New York or board in Brooklyn. And they're sailing to Charleston, South Carolina. They're doing Yorktown, Virginia, uh, Boston, Newport, Halifax, and back into New York, or if you choose Boston. They're great itineraries, something new for us, and still plenty of space available for less than three months away on some of them. So I did want to point it out, but we're going to dive into Alaska, which I said, Princess Cruises, we absolutely love Alaska. We put so much focus into the product. Uh, I actually have seven ships sailing there, but I like to give a little bit of trivia on Alaska. It's two times the size of Texas, 12 times the size of New York state. It is home to 19 of the tallest mountains in the U.S., with Mount Denali at over 20,000 feet, the highest concentration of bears and bald eagles on earth. There's more caribou than people. There's no skunks or snakes, which is a very good thing in my book. One half of the United States national park land is in the state of Alaska. One half, think about that. More people have driver's licenses, I'm sorry, have pilot's licenses than driver's licenses. That really says something. And it has the lowest population density in the United States. It is home to 5,000 glaciers, 3,000 rivers, and 3 million lakes. It is a huge, vast land of over 365 million acres. Tremendous. And I like a visual. So here's the state of New York in Alaska. Now, anyone that has driven the state of New York, whether you're starting in Plattsburgh, going all the way down to Manhattan or even Long Island, knows how big our state is. But this, look how small it looks in comparison to the state of Alaska. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that when you're planning a, an Alaska trip with your AAA advisor, whether it's cruise or what we call cruise tour, which is the cruise and the land, you want to see as much as you possibly can in your visits because there's always more and more to see. The reason people travel to Alaska is they want to view the glaciers, the mountain, the wildlife. And on a princess cruise, you have the opportunity to see all of that. And when you do a cruise tour, even more. Princess Cruises has been rated number one cruise line in Alaska 20 times by Travel Weekly. Now, Travel Weekly is a publication that is for all our travel advisors across the United States. So it's really an honor that we are 
voted number one 20 times by this organization. We've also hit 21 straight years with the Travel Advisor magazine. And why Princess in Alaska? And I'm going to show you some different things that we can offer. But we've sailed, been in, up in Alaska, it's close to 60 years. And we have top rated cruises and in depth cruise tours that really can get you into the heart of Alaska. We have a terrific North to Alaska program, which is actually our partnership with the Discovery Network. And this gives us inroads and opportunities on land and sea to offer different unique uh, perks or experiences when you're up in Alaska. We have been rated the best education program with our North to Alaska program. And you'll see different things. One of the scariest things to me is the deadliest catch down at the bottom. And it shows the, the creatures that are swimming um, in the oceans that you're traveling. Our absolute favorite is puppies in the piazza. Who doesn't love puppies? Um, and we, these are the sled dogs or the puppies that are being trained to run the Alaska Iditarod, which is that big famous race up in um, Alaska that just completed, if I'm not mistaken. But these puppies come on board, you're able to interact with them and, and listen to the trainers and, and experience what they go through um, to learn to race this unbelievable race. We are known for uh, the best uh, seafood in Alaska. You really can't turn without seeing seafood somewhere, especially salmon up in the state. We've won awards for best overall cuisine with our wild Alaska seafood. Um, have great beer experience, a lot of different Alaska ales and seltzers that are also on board the ship. We never just sail to a destination. Our goal is to always bring the destination on board. And whether that's with food, drink, entertainment, or for our children, we've got a great junior ranger program for really the little and the middle guys, not so much the teenagers, um, where they talk to a park ranger, they get um, all information on the cultural and the life of Alaska. They can even dissect things on board um, in the kids program. So it's a really good experience. And again, the partnership with Discovery gives us Animal Planet and the Discovery family. So that's actually at one of the um, sled dog racing areas where they're interacting with the puppies and the dogs themselves. So here's our Alaska fleet. Uh, seven ships sailing this year. We do still have space. I'll touch base on some of that later, but there's still space for 24 on the cruise portion and the cruise tour. Um, and you can sail from Seattle. You can sail from San Francisco, Vancouver, or Whittier. Now, Whittier is an area that's about an hour and a half from Anchorage. Um, and you can see it. the ship is right there. And it gives you an opportunity to be much closer than Anchorage than most of the other lines um, sail from. Most of the others sail from Seward, uh, which is about four hours from Anchorage. So this gives us a good opportunity. You can visit Alaska um, with Princess in a couple ways. Um, one of the main ones is our seven-day cruises inside passage or our seven-day cruises voyage of the glaciers. These are areas um, where you can sail right from Vancouver or Seattle on the inside passage. Round trip, voyage of the glaciers one way, you would sail from Vancouver or up to Whittier or Whittier down. And then of course the cruise tour would give you the cruise, the train and the lodges. Here's a map, I like to show maps too, but this just gives you an idea. When you're doing that inside passage and starting from Vancouver or Seattle, you're sailing north, you're hitting that inside passage, Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, you'd either have Glacier Bay, Tracy Arm, um, Hubbard Glacier for glacier viewing back down to Seattle or Vancouver. And looking at the map, you'll see that pretty much keeps you on the coast of Canada. So you're not getting into the heart of Alaska, which is even so far up past uh, Anchorage. If you're doing the voyage of the glaciers, you get to see more. 
and I've talked about this a couple of times, but let's tell you what this actually is. What is an Alaska cruise tour? It's taking a seven day cruise. You get the train and one of our princess lodges. Now princess has five wilderness lodges in the state of Alaska. No one else offers that. So it gives us a unique opportunity to get our clients or guests into far deeper into the state. And there's two options. There's northbound cruise tour or southbound. Northbound is when you start in Vancouver and you sail north. Southbound would be when you start in Whittier and sail south. That's on the cruise portion. If you're adding the land or the cruise tour, if you were doing southbound, you would do the land first and then board the ship and sail south. So that's the big difference there. And again, here's our map. So you can see what I was talking about with the one-way voyage of the glaciers. If you were sailing north, you would start in Vancouver, you'd hit those same ports of call inside Passage, Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway. Glacier Bay is an absolute definite on the one-way cruises. Glacier Bay has limited permits, so not every ship can go into Glacier Bay. I believe they allow two per uh, day. On all of our Voyage of the Glacier cruises, Princess has access into Glacier Bay. We actually have more permits than anyone else um, on some of our inside passage. So that's why I'm saying Glacier Bay, premier spot for glacier viewing. So the one way we get inside passage, we end up in Glacier Bay, but we continue on because we're not going back down to where we boarded the ship. We get to see more. So we go into College Fjord, which has 16 tidewater glaciers itself, into Prince William Sound, which has abundance of wildlife, and then into Whittier, which is, again, an hour and a half near Anchorage. You could then either have your seven-day cruise experience and be done, or you would continue on if you were doing a northbound cruise tour where the land would be after. And you could see the railroad tracks as far up as we go, these are where our lodges are situated throughout the state, and Fairbanks being the farthest one. Again, showing you the state of New York and Alaska, the reason we want you to go up that far is to see as much of Alaska as you absolutely can. Now, here is a hosted tour that AAA Northway is offering for 2025, and we're going to kind of take you through the itinerary where it's a five night land, again, with that seven night cruise. And we can get you more information on this if you are interested, but it gives us that experience with the rail and the tours. So we have the open air rail cars where the upper level is where you sit and relax and look at the scenery. The lower level, we actually have a dining car. So you can eat when you're on board, never too far from a meal, any of us. Um, but this just kind of gives you a good shot. There's open air platforms. It's the glass domed rail cars. And you're tr actually tracing the route of the historic Alaska Railroad. The scenery is absolutely spectacular. I have seen bear from the train car, which is kind of pretty cool as you're as you're chugging on by. Um, but it's just spectacular. And there's a shot, as he said, of the dining car itself. Um, the travel through to the lodges is either by rail or motor coach. You get a combination of both. So this is just a shot of our Princess Cruises motor coach. Very comfortable. And again, here are different lodges. I want to point out for this tour that we're doing with AAA Northway, they're stopping in Denali and Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. So Mac Mount McKinley Princess Lodge and uh, I'm sorry, Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge are at the north and south end of Denali National Park. So that is the big draw when you're in the Denali area. So Mount McKinley Lodge is at the south end. Denali is at the north. Um, but for our tour, we're starting at the Fairbanks Princess Riverside Lodge. Now, all of our lodges are located on riverbanks all have restaurants and different amenities to offer um, when you're at the lodge itself and all offer land excursion to go explore the city itself or town. Um, and here's just a shot 
of the lodge. One of the things that's included with your AAA tour is a riverboat experience where you go up and down the Nianu River. Then you also would visit an uh, Alaskan native village and you actually even go panning for gold. So that's pretty neat. Our next stop would be the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge, which is absolutely spectacular. Again, one mile from the National Park entrance. It overlooks the river again. There's over 635 rooms, a lot of different restaurants, hot tubs, facilities for you to enjoy and be outside and experience that Alaskan air and feel. It's really a cool place. And these are just some shots of the lodge for you to see. Um, and then the big draw in the Denali area, as I mentioned, is Denali National Park, which is one of the largest parks in the United States. Uh, again, with AAA, you get included the natural park, natural history park tour, and you go into the park itself and have an opportunity to see a lot of the Alaska wildlife. This just kind of shows you the different stops. You can upgrade to the longer park tour if you choose. And again, your AAA advisor can help you with that. And Denali's Big Five is what everyone wants to go see. So where we have the moose and the bear and the wolves and the doll sheep um, it, it's and the caribou. That's what everyone hopes to see when they're in the park area or traveling throughout Alaska. Here's just the visitor's center in Denali National Park. Um, and then after two days there, we would transition to the Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. Now the Mount McKinley Princess Lodge is 40 miles from Mount Denali. Um, it used to be called Mount McKinley, so that's why we have a lodge named after it, but President McKinley never stepped foot in the state of Alaska. So the folks in Alaska didn't really love that the mountain was named after him. So um, before President Obama left office, he allowed, uh, the people of Alaska to change the name to Denali Mountain, um, leaving us with a Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. But that's fine. Um, as I said, it's 40 miles from the mountain. And again, a lot of things to do at the lodge area itself, whether it's hiking or land excursions or just sitting around uh, viewing the mountain. This is one of the perks, again, of being partners with the Discovery Network. They have a television show called Treehouse Masters, and they actually built a treehouse for us at Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge to give you better views of that mountain. Um, they actually do maple syrup tasting. They'll do a wine and cheese. They'll do lectures in there. But it is the perfect spot to be. Remember, up in Alaska, the sun stays out a lot longer than here, and it can be visible. You can be out 20 to 22 hours a day. Um, so this could be really even at 10 o'clock at night that these folks are out there viewing it. Um, and it is all about the view. This is Mount Denali itself. Um, it's just absolutely spectacular. And then we would board the ship. So as I told you, the train and the ship are right next to each other, um, where you would come down on the train from Mount McKinley and cross the street and board that ship and start your cruise experience. It makes it all seamless and easy. And again, here's the shot of the train leaving the pier and the ship probably reboarding passengers to sail on another journey. So we've done from Fairbanks to Denali to McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodges. And now we've transitioned down to Whittier where the ship is now sailing. And as I mentioned, sailing through these areas, College Fjord, Prince William Sound, um, and heading on down south. And again, we're bringing the destination on board the ship. So you're not just sailing it, you're experiencing it on board with our North to Alaska program. So we have our lumberjacks come on board and do an axe throwing demonstration. We've got the puppies, of course. We have Libby Riddles, who's the woman down on the right with the white uh, dog. She actually was the first woman to win the Alaska Iditarod. So she comes on and does a whole presentation about training and, and the experience itself. We have naturalists on board the ship. 
um, that will give lectures and talks and are just walking around giving information to folks about Alaska. And then when we go into Glacier Bay, we actually have a park ranger come on board who does a commentary throughout the day while you're sailing in Glacier Bay, letting you know what you're seeing, hopefully wildlife. Um, here are the ports of call that we'll be hitting, and I'll briefly discuss them, but we've got Juneau, Skagway, and Ketchikan as the actual ports of call where you would disembark the ship. But our first stop is Glacier Bay on this exclusive uh, Northway tour. It is just an amazing place. It is massive glaciers that stretch over 3 million acres from the St. Elias and Fairweather mountain ranges to the end of the fjords. As I mentioned, access is extremely limited. There's only about two permits given per day. Uh, it is home to humpback whales, sea otters, porpoises, and harbor seals. It is one of the most spectacular experiences. Um, even with the, the commentation going on board, it is just a quiet, peaceful visit into this national park. And it really looks like this. It, it, it's really breathtaking. Words are hard to describe it. The pictures, as I say, are accurate. Um, but it's something you really want to experience yourself because it's just spectacular. And there we go. And as I mentioned, we have the rangers on board. So one of our first stops is Skagway. It is known as the gateway to the Klondike. Um, it retains the feel from the gold rush days. It's uh, protected by the National Park Association. So they've kept the frontier style uh, storefronts and the rustic boardwalk. So this is kind of what it looked like when the folks were coming in panning for gold. This is the last town they would hit before they went up into the wilderness. Um, one of the things people do here is they do the White Pass Rail, which is one of the oldest, narrowest railroads in the world. And it actually follows the path that the miners took in search for gold back in the day. Here is a view right outside of Skagway itself. And here's just a shot. I just took this picture. Here's a shot of the salmon swimming. Really, there's streams and rivers as you're walking around in town and you just see all the salmon swimming. And if I guess if you're a real fish person, you could just reach in and grab one there. Um, and then next we would hit Juneau. Now, Juneau is actually the state capital of Alaska, but it is landlocked. The only way to get into Juneau is by air or sea. You cannot drive into the, into the city of Juneau. Um, Mount Roberts and Mount Juno provide the gorgeous backdrop here. And this is Mount Roberts Tramway, which is, goes up to about 1,800 feet above the city itself. And it's an easy access right off the ship. And you get great views of the water and the cruise ships and the land. One of the things people love to do here is Mendenhall Glacier. It's 13 miles long. Um, there's hiking trails. People go up, they'll helicopter, airplane up, and it is just one of the um, big highlights in the area of Juneau itself. One of the other big highlights is Tracy's King Crab. That's my family's arms. Uh, Tracy's King Crab Shack is very well known in the city, um, and they have these monstrous crab legs um, there for your uh, picking. People line up to get into Kate, Tracy's King Shab in the late, late afternoon. Uh, next stop would be Ketchikan. It is known as the city on stilts or the first city. It's actually was the is the first city you hit as you're coming into Alaska from Vancouver or Seattle. Um, as I said, city on stilts. It is known for its uh, totem pole historic park. Uh, you have Creek Street Boardwalk. One of the things people do here is the whale watching cruises or fishing. Fishing is a big activity in Ketchikan. This is actually my child, gosh, he was probably 10 or 11, one of his favorite things to do there, um, and got to go back at 16, and again, still doing the same fishing. Um, very popular activity um, as you're in Ketchikan. 
And then you will be sailing through the inside passage um, going down towards Vancouver, where you have beautiful sights in the water and on the land. And see whatever you can as you're sailing by. Now, people always ask me, what's the best time to go to Alaska? And it really varies. There's always something to see. We sail only May through September because of weather and snow. We don't want to be there in snow. And the bears typically come out of hibernation in May and June. Um, fishing is, is most prevalent in June and July, but I've been pretty much every month, and my son has been very successful. Uh, the northern lights are more prevalent in September, later fall into September. They're most prevalent in January, but we're not up there then. Uh, the midnight sun, when the sun stays out the longest, is June and July. Um, but again, it's much longer than when, what we're used to, regardless of when you go. And the best pricing is when the kids are still in school. I don't think that's a surprise for anyone. But in May and September, what we call our shoulder season, season is when you're going to see the, the best rates. Now, this is a shot um, of, of a cruise I was on with family. I think this was late August, to be honest. And I just wanted to show you, you'll see some folks are bundled up, um, but some are actually swimming, some are sitting in shorts. I think the folks bundled up are for, not from our area. They're probably more warm weather uh, climates because when it gets in the 60s or even 50s in New York, we tend to get into shorts, uh, where if you're from Florida or California, where it's warm all the time, you're cold when it's in the 60s. But that's just a guess. But just so you know, it does get warm in Alaska. Um, and you can actually see. I'm going to see if this video will show. I'm not sure the sound will, but it's just really music. And it just kind of gives you a little picture of some of the things I was talking about and some of the actual scenery um, when you're up in the area. These are shots of the mountain ranges and the seaplane coming in probably into Juneau, as I mentioned. And there are sled dogs racing. That's something I would do, but I'm very interested. There you saw a whale coming out. It's just an amazing, amazing cruise out there with his cubs. And now that's in Glacier Bay, and that's called calving when the glacier breaks apart and falls in. So you see it and then you hear it after. There are salmon swimming upstream. At the glacier with the water rushing off. And a shot of a moose. Really, I've been fortunate because I've worked for Princess that I've gotten to go more than once. It's an absolutely amazing experience, really. Um, words are hard to describe. Pictures are accurate um, when you look at them. I also want to remind you that AAA, because as I said to you, they sell more of our Alaska and Alaska Cruise Tour product than anybody else in the country. They get special perks with us. So on every a, any booking, it doesn't even have to be Alaska, um, as long as you're in a balcony stateroom or above, you can earn up to $150 onboard spending money, or what we call an onboard credit, plus a $50 shore excursion credit. Again, every single ship and sailing date with AAA, we have this special offer if you're in a balcony and above. And I mentioned their exclusive tour for AAA Northway, but we also have other options for you. If you're looking at different uh, land portions, AAA again has 11 and 12 night cruise tours for you, where maybe you see Anchorage instead of Fairbanks um, and different um, number of days. So you can spend as little as three days on land or as much as 12 days on land. It's really up to you. But there's always a seven-day cruise component as part of it. So you definitely want to talk to your AAA travel advisor to see what works best for you 
But as we mentioned, this is their exclusive tour for next year um, that they have available um, for you. And here's, as I said, here's some of the other options where we've got off the beaten path that take you on a little bit longer cruises. Now, right now for 2024, we actually still have space on some of these longer cruise tours. And with AAA, you can either get a discount off the price of the cruise tour itself, uh, $500 per cabin, or you can get a $600 onboard credit per cabin to use for shore excursions and different port perks. And that's going on right now. I think, and you can, again, talk to one of your advisors um, to see if you can take advantage of this. And as I said, these are for our longer cruise tours. They're 12 to 14 days where we have this offer. It is capacity controlled, of course, but just reach out to your advisor and see what might still be available. But there definitely is space for 2024. And you choose your cruise tour. There's a connoisseur tour or hosted where the connoisseur includes the meals um, and it's escorted and the longer park tour is included or hosted, whereas meals are not included, but you can add them on. You have a person at each stop that leads you through and then you have that shorter park tour. And again, these are the national parks that you can visit on the land. Here's our Kenai Princess Wilderness Lodge which on the Kenai Fjords uh, National Park or Resurrection Bay, which has abundance of sea wildlife that you can see. So Denali National Park is the land wildlife. Uh, Kenai area has the sea wildlife. We also have the Copper River Wilderness Lodge, which is near Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which is the largest national park in the United States. And again, fishing, but these are smaller property because they're kind of off the beaten path. So whatever you choose, as I said, your AAA advisor is so extremely knowledgeable, but we want you to get up into Alaska with Princess and see this amazing wildlife. It's just your one with nature, whether you're just viewing it or participating it, it's one of our favorite destinations um, in the world is Alaska. And there's our whales. And you can't forget our puppies. Again, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, here are our AAA advisors that you can reach out to and give them a holler. They're so happy and looking forward to helping you and working with you wherever you want to go, Alaska, or as I said, don't forget our American Heritage Cruises out of Boston or New York. Thank you so much again for your time. I hope we see you on board. Take good care. Bye-bye.